Jesus. Well, good still morning, everyone. I, uh, I realized last night when our dinner ended and the entertainment ended, it was five o'clock in the morning for most of you. <laughs> so I admire your collective stamina. Thank you very much. And I promise my comments will not take you to tomorrow morning. My friends, I'm honored to host you all here in Washington for the uh, U.S. African Sum Leaders Summit. It's a wonderful to spend time with you and your spouses last night at dinner, and I truly enjoyed it, and thank you for making the time. And let me also convey my condolences to the people of the Democratic Republic of the Congo for the tragic loss of life and the communities impacted due to the flooding. Mr. President, we uh, missed you last night, uh, but uh, if there's anything the United States can do to help in this effort, uh, please, please let us know. We'll do whatever we can. Today, I'm looking forward to hearing more from all of you about the issues and priorities that matter most to Africa and how we can deepen our cooperation. And I emphasize cooperation. Our nations have worked closely together for a long time. We've improved the lives of countless people in all our countries in meaningful ways on both sides of the Atlantic. And with this summit and with the African Union's Agenda 2063, our eyes are fixed squarely on the future. We're now in the early years that will be, that will be a decisive decade. The choices that we make today and the remainder of this decade and how we tackle these challenges, in my view, will determine the direction the entire world takes in the decades to come. As I said yesterday, the United States is all in on Africa and all in with Africa. African voices, African leadership, Af African innovation, all are critical to addressing the most pressing global challenges and to realizing the vision we all share, a world that is free, a world that is open, prosperous and secure. Africa belongs to the table in every room, in every room where global challenges are being discussed and in every institution where discussions are taking place. That's why I announced in September at the United Nations General Assembly that the United States fully supports reforming the UN Security Council to include permanent representation for Africa. And today, I'm also calling for the African Union to join the G20 as a permanent member of the G20. Whether it's, it's been a long time in coming, but it's going to come. <laughs> and uh, today, I'm also, uh, whether we're upholding or defending the foundation principles of global peace and security enshrined in the UN Charter and, the UN, and in the AU's seminal, seminal documents, or meeting the challenges that impact every nation. The people of Africa are indispensable partners to delivering, to delivering the progress that benefits everyone, not just in Africa and the United States, but the whole world. The COVID-19 pandemic, followed by Russia's unjust and unprovoked war against its neighbor Ukraine, has roiled the global economy, erasing many of the development gains that we worked so hard together to achieve over the past two decades. But that doesn't change our shared goals and our commitment to seeing them through. It only makes it more urgent for us to take decisive action and take it together. That's why over the next three years, working in close cooperation with the United States Congress, we plan to commit $55 billion in Africa to advance the priorities we share and, su and to support the Agenda 2063. That number represents a comprehensive commitment from the United States to invest in Africa's people, Africa's infrastructure, Africa's agriculture, Africa's health system, Africa's security, and more. In our view, our new shared vision statement lays out a forward-looking foundation for the 21st century partnership between Africa and the United States. We want to work with you on these issues that matter most to our people's lives. And we're looking to increase our collaboration in every area, 
from rural communities to urban centers to cyberspace to outer space. In addition to our investments, we're also committed to helping African countries assess the financing you need, the financing you need to build sustainable and inclusive economies. We're leading a global effort to pursue equitable arrangements for global creditors to provide debt relief so nations can prioritize their people, not backbreaking debt payments. And I'm asking the Congress for the authority to lend $21 billion to the International Monetary Fund to provide access to necessary financing for low and middle income countries that are so difficult to come by now and so will help Africa's re recovery efforts and support projects that build resilience against future crises. As we engage with your countries, the United States will always lead with our values, support for democracy, respect for the rule of law, commitment to human rights, responsible government, all are part of our DNA. That doesn't mean we always get everything right. We surely don't. And the work of democracy is never finished or never guaranteed. It's about changing triumph over apartheid to Nigeria's not too young to run movement, empowering a new generation of change makers, to the record voter turnout in Zambia, where young people demanded a better future. We see over and over again that our greatest power is our people. So one of the commitments I want to highlight today is the investment in countering democratic backsliding through our new African Democratic and Political Transition Initiative. Collaborating closely with African governments, regional institutions, and civil society, my administration will work with the United States Congress to invest $75 million to strengthen transparent, accountable governance facilities, facilitate voter registration, support constitutional reform, and more. We'll also work to support and strengthen the security benefits that flow from good governance, including with the new 21st Century Partnership for African Security. Through this three-year, $100, $100 million pilot program, the Department of Defense will work with our African partners to boost reforms that build their security capacity. Now, as every leader here understands, the real measure of success is not in announcements, but it's in the follow-through. That's why I've asked one of our great diplomats, a man with deep respect for Africa and long experience working with the governments across the continent, to oversee implementation coming out of this summit. Ambassador Johnny Carson. Many of you already know him personally. You certainly know his skill and his reputation. So you know that he's going to make sure we translate our commitments on paper into progress that people can see in their daily lives. And on Tuesday, I also directed the establishment of the President's Advisory Council on African Diaspora Engagement in the United States, so we can tap the enormous strength of the diaspora communities here in the United States and make sure their insight and experiences are reflected in our work. And finally, I'm grateful that all of you made the journey to Washington for this summit, and I'm eager to visit your continent. As I told some of you, you invited me to your countries. I said, be careful what you wish for, because I may show up. The poor relatives always show up. The wealthy ones never show up. The poor come and they eat your food, stay longer than they should. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing many of you in your home countries. I also directed the establishment of the President Advisory Council, as I said, on, di on the diaspora. And we'll get input from them. And finally, I'm grateful that all of you made the journey, as I said. And I know it's been long, and I know when you arrive here at, uh, in the middle of the night and then start off a couple hours later with meetings, it's a long haul. I, uh, Vice President Harris is also planning to visit, as is my wife, Jill. Secretary Blinken's on his way, Secretary of Defense Austin, Se Secretary of Treasury Yellen, uh, Secretary of Commerce Ramundo, the USAID Administrator Power, and our Ambassador to the United Nations, Linda Thomas-Greenfield. Promise you'll send them back. 
promise you'll send them back. I need them. They all want to go, but I'm worried they won't come home. Yeah, uh, but I'm all, all kidding aside. Uh, we're all going to be seeing you, and you're going to see a lot of us because we're deadly earnest and serious about this endeavor. And you're going to see us deliver our commitments, all of our commitments. Now we've crafted this summit and this agenda in close cooperation with the African Union and focus on African priorities. The United States fully supports the blueprint you laid out in Agenda 2063 to build an integrated, quote, integrated, prosperous, and peaceful Africa that is driven by the African people, centered in inclusive and sustainable development, and where Africa is an indispensable global partner. I'm eager to hear from all of you. How can the United States deepen our partnerships with you and better work with African nations and the AU to fulfill the aspirations of Agenda 2063? I want to thank you all again. And I'm now going to turn it over to Secretary of State Blinken to facilitate our discussion. Again, thank you so much for being here. Appreciate it. meetings, conversations, but I think this is the first time everyone is actually around uh, the same table. And I've got to say, looking at this, uh, if uh, a photograph is worth a thousand words, uh, well, we've got probably 10,000 words here. It's a very powerful photograph to see. Uh, to, to start things off, um, we very much welcome getting uh, the African perspective, starting with the president of Senegal, uh, the chairperson of the uh, African Union, President Macky Sall. Monsieur le Président, micro à vous. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Secteur d'État, Monsieur le Président Joseph Biden, chers hôtes, chers collègues, Monsieur le Secrétaire d'État, Mesdames et Messieurs les Ministres. Au nom de l'Afrique, je vous remercie vivement, Monsieur le Président Biden, pour votre accueil convivial. Et je voudrais également remercier votre épouse, épouse Jill Biden, pour le succulent dîner d'hier soir à la Maison Blanche et la très belle musique qui a accompagné ce dîner. Merci en tout cas pour cette hospitalité. Je voudrais aussi saluer l'excellente organisation des travaux de notre sommet. Nous apprécions votre attachement au partenariat afro-américain Ainsi que le temps et les efforts considérables and the considerable time and effort that your administration has committed to organizing this summit. And it's in this spirit that we have come to revitalize our common agenda with you. Certainly, times are uncertain and troubled. The challenges are more numerous and complex, but it's in hard times that friendship finds its greatest test of greatness, trust, and mutual respect. In this time of profound transition, working together, this requires another way of thinking of the world. By working as conscious partners in a world of unequal development in respect of common values and their differences. On this basis, Mr. President, Africa, through my voice, wishes to share with you six priorities and a message for our summit. The first priority, peace, security, and the fight against tra terrorism in Africa. We wish for the fight against terrorism to be a part, an integral part, of the world struggle against this blight to contribute to international security and peace. Uh, Mr. President, we expect a strong uh, commitment on this vital priority and support from the United States so that the UN Security Council places the fight against 
terrorism in Africa in the framework of the collective security mechanism that is in the UN Charter. Second priority. Before speaking about the second priority, on behalf of all the colleagues, I would like uh, to commend uh, President Biden on the intention to place uh, Africa as a permanent representation in the G20. We need to applaud that initiative for our participation in the G20 as a permanent uh, member and also integrating the continent as a permanent member at the Security Council. The second priority, Mr. President, before the triple impact of climate change, a health crisis, and a major war, Africa presents its advocacy for partial allotment of special drawing rights, and you raised a very important aspect, and we hope that the Congress can accompany you in this endeavor, and the implementation in the G20 on debt relief after these different shocks throughout the world, is including in developed countries, thousands of people are no longer able to bear the cost of living and fall into extreme poverty. The situation is even more difficult for much more weak, weaker economies such as ours. The massive efforts put forth by developed countries through businesses, we put in place a economic and social resilience measures, which are limited because the crisis is so serious. This is why we advocate for an action in solidarity that is international to reinforce resilience and economic revitalization. I have to say that the current crisis weakens democracy on the continent. Indeed, without some betterment that is economic, democracy will always remain fragile and vulnerable with the risk of instability, which we've already witnessed in seven com several countries. The third priority, Africa wishes a more sustained uh, commitment on investment in development infrastructures, roads, railroads, electric plants, digital infrastructure. Yesterday we saw and we listened with great interest uh, during the business forum, your statement that Africa is the last great work site of the world with uh, projects to develop uh, infrastructures in Africa. Some have begun and others are to be begun. These are opportunities for investment for shared prosperity. We ask for the mobilization of sources launched by the G7 for the world infrastructure and for investment to support the implementation of infrastructure in Africa. Obviously, it's not about just about mobilizing the public sector, although it does need to be involved. But funds need to be invested in Africa to invest and to obtain private investments. The priority, Mr. President, is that Af Africa is subject to the pollution, the plight of pollution, and. Uh, the we want a solid development in carbon, which is resilient to the climate change. I remind you that according to the estimates made by GIEC, Africa needs $86 million per year by 2030 to fund these needs to adapt. Since uh, financial commitments uh, in order to uh, convene for, to uh, fund the commitment, Africa Africa's governments uh, 
will continue to resort to debts to finance their green projects and their mixed energy strategies. But Africa asks for an equitable uh, green transition to satisfy its uh, industrialization needs and at a competitive cost and to ensure the universal access to electricity in more than 600 million families who are, still don't have electricity. This is a responsibility that we African leaders could give up on, but we need to use our available resources in the field of energy transition. The fifth priority, Africa works, would like to work with the United States to, fa to win the, the war against hunger. We salute your country and your support, uh, uh, your support to uh, fund the financing funds uh, in the context of uh, the World Bank for food production. In the media, Africa would like urgent measures to be taken to facilitate the access to um, the markets of um, uh, fertilizers. In the long term, we want to work with the United States, above all, to improve uh, production in Africa, including by making massive investments in the, the diversification of uh, uh, the chains, value chains and infrastructure. The joint statement on food security, which will be uh, released at the end of the summit, is a good action plan uh, in order to fulfill this goal. With the lessons that we learned from the crises, the time is right to take vigorous action in the field of agriculture and the food security. Mr. President, I propose that I sum our summit launch a presidential initiative at your level on agriculture in Africa. Sixth priority, Africa ask for a more inclusive and just uh, world governance by accelerating the reform process of the UN Security Council and to give a seat to the Union, African Union in the UN. And thank you for this. We have gotten the response that we wanted from you. Thank you. And we want the support of the United States and we thank the United States very warmly for the commitments that they made uh, for Africa's place at the G20. And this will happen at the next uh, uh, G20 summit. So thank you, Mr. President. These are the six priorities. As far as our message is concerned, this is a renewed commitment to open for dialogue and partnership for uh, strong international relations. In this uh, spirit, Africa calls uh, for the lifting of sanctions which continue to uh, affect the Zimbabwean people. Zimbabwe has been sanctioned since Mugabe's time. And I think it's time to lift these sanctions so that the Zimbabwe people can continue to fight efficiently against underdevelopment and poverty. In the name of my colleagues, I must also tell you that we are concerned, Mr. President, by the American bill on economic and trade ex trade between the uh, your country and foreign powers. This bill, with its uh, sanctions, which uh, targets a whole continent, is the first time uh, is the first in uh, international relations. Africa is asking why such a bill exists and why Africa is targeted. And in the spirit of the rules of the uh, World uh, Trade Organization, we ask for this project to be reviewed in the, for the implementation of this would uh, damage the relationships between the U.S. and Africa, and we don't want this to happen. Our hope. And that's why we're here today with you. Our hope is to pursue with you our uh, common efforts for the Africa-US uh, partnership and build together this partnership on a more solid and confident nature for progress and uh, shared prosperity for our people.
Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. President. To the chairperson of the uh, Afternoon Commission, Chairperson Moussa Faki Mahmoud. Merci, Monsieur le Secrétaire d'État. Excellence. Thank you, Mr. Secretary of State. Uh, ex Your Excellency, uh, Mr. President. Uh, we salute the President of the uh, Senegal, Macky Sall. and facilities offered for the success of this summit. Notre rencontre d'aujourd'hui. Our meeting today is historical for many reasons. All the aspirations which uh, were uh, were undertaken with the help of the President Macky Sall were are part of the agenda 2063 uh, converge upon our goals which concern Peace, integration, inclusive development, good governance, democracy, and uh, human rights. This was a result of a collective intellectual effort of uh, men and women who were in Africa, politicians, university experts, experts, uh, civil service, civil society, and the private sector. The Agenda 2063 is a concentration of both doctrines and programs for Africa for the next 50 years since it was implemented in 2013 to ensure its success in its objective. The Af Africa is counting on its own efforts, on its own genius, and is uh, committed to a solution provided by Africa itself. It counts on the solidarity of its friends and respect and uh, mutual advantageous results. In this perspective of solidarity, we say sincerely to all of our partners that we prefer concrete action rather than uh, intentions of goodwill. We know that uh, seeking practical solutions is uh, agreed upon by our American partner. And this is our wish, and the most ardent wish, is that the partnership with the United States w will give us the financial needs that we need to, in order for it to become a real lever for the fulfillment of these uh, goals for the Agenda 2013, uh, 2063. This, it will be this partnership uh, that will be significant for our people. Thank you very much.